This is going to be a quick overview of the short book of Lamentations. The author of the book is Jeremiah. The book has five chapters, 154 verses, and around 3,415 words. Jeremiah wrote the book of Jeremiah before the exile, and now he wrote Lamentations during the exile. In Jeremiah, he was giving them warning about their sin. Now he's lamenting about the consequences that came from them staying in their sin. And there's always consequences to staying in sin. There's always going to be sorrow and lamenting after you go through the pleasures of sin that only last for a season. But the exile is when Nebuchadnezzar came in and took captive people from the kingdom of Judah. And I'm sure you are familiar with Nebuchadnezzar, especially from reading the book of Daniel. But the theme of this book is the desolation of Jerusalem. And the book of Lamentations deals with the destruction of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar historically. But doctrinally, if you read it, it's a picture of the tribulation with Nebuchadnezzar being a type of the Antichrist. You see, everything in the Old Testament is a picture of something you'll see in the New Testament. Some interesting facts is chapters 1, 2, 4, and 5 have 22 chapters with chapter 3 having 66, excuse me, chapters 1, 2, 4, and 5 have 22 verses, with chapter 3 having 66 verses, which is 22 times 3. So that's just an interesting fact there. And in chapter 1, Jeremiah is lamenting over Jerusalem's destruction. Verses 1 through 11 will show you Jeremiah's description of how the city looks now after these horrible events. In verse 1, the great city has become tributary. So what does that mean, tributary? In Proverbs 12, 24, The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. The city has become tributary. It was the great city, but now they're knocked off the throne. They've become tributary. Lamentations 1-2, she weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks. Among all her lovers she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. You have heard the saying, with friends like these, who needs enemies? God was their friend, and they chose these fake friends. And it's like these, it's like, uh, you know, young teenage girls, they go home crying because they found out their friends wasn't really their friends. Israel is now lamenting and in, in, in sorrow because they found out their friends weren't really their friends. Sometimes the people you choose to fellowship with aren't really your friends. You should choose your friends wisely. Anybody you hang out with, people you marry, people you are in any type of relationship with, and this is even talked about in the New Testament in 2 Corinthians six fourteen through 17. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers, for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Israel didn't go by this principle. They got friendly with the wrong people. So learn from the state of them. As Paul says, these things are written for our learning. They are our examples. And in chapter 2, you see the anger of God. You see the reason for the overthrow of Jerusalem. In verses 1 two through 10, you see the destruction brought against it. In verses 11 through 12, you see why he brought destruction against it. Lamentations 2, 1 says, How hath the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with a cloud and his anger, and cast down from heaven and to the earth the beauty of Israel, and remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. So the daughter of Zion was covered with a cloud. God struck them with blindness. 
They didn't cherish his words. And that is the only thing to see through the cloud with. Just like Christians today have a fog over their eyes because they've lost the book. They are covered with a cloud. Many times it's the eye cloud because they spend more time on the internet lost in some cloud than they do in the words of God. Lamentations 2, 3 through 5. He hath cut off in his fierce anger all the horn of Israel. He hath drawn back his right hand from before the enemy. And he burned against Jacob like a flaming fire which devoureth round about. He hath been his bow like an enemy. He stood with his right hand as an adversary and slew all that were pleasant to the eye in the tabernacle of the daughter of Zion. He poured out his fury like fire. The Lord was as an enemy. He hath swallowed up Israel. He hath swallowed up all her palaces. He hath destroyed his strongholds and increased in the daughter of Judah mourning and lamentation. So the prophets Israel were listening to got them more in a mess. And this is one of the reasons they are in so much trouble. It says in verse 14 in chapter 2, The prophets have seen vain and foolish things for thee, and they have not discovered thine iniquity to turn away thy captivity, but have seen for thee false burdens and causes of banishment. And the women are going to eat their children just like the Lord said they would. In Lamentations 2.20, Behold, O Lord, and consider to whom thou hast done this. Shall the women eat their fruit and children of a span long? Shall the priest and the prophet be slain in the sanctuary of the Lord? And this surely is going to happen again in the tribulation. When a worldwide famine hits, they're going to eat their own kids again, just like the Bible said they would. In chapter 3, Jeremiah talks about how, talks about his own personal lamentations. Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Isn't it something the Lord's mercies and compassions are new every morning? Great is his faithfulness. You know, you mess up today, but then the Lord just continuously has mercy, continuously has forgiveness, continuously has compassion. If you just come to him now, confess your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive your sins and to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. His mercies are new every morning. In chapter 4, Israel is lamenting because the crown of the kingdom of heaven has gone off their head. In Lamentations 4, 18 through 19, it says, They hunt our steps that we cannot go in our streets. Our end is near. Our days are fulfilled, for our end is come. Our persecutors are swifter than the eagles of heaven. They pursued us upon the mountains. They laid wait for us in the wilderness. It's just like what's going to happen to them in the tribulation. The Bible says in Matthew 24, Ye which are in Judea, flee to the mountains. The Antichrist is going to be a Jew hater. He's going to want to kill the Jews. They're going to be running from him. He's going to be swifter. Him and his people is going to be swifter than the eagles of heaven. And they're going to pursue him into the mountains. In chapter 5, the last chapter, you see them lamenting while asking for restoration. They are confessing and asking God for help. Just like you need to do if you've gotten away from the Lord. As I said, the Bible says, 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Maybe you are in sin yourself today and you found out the hard way that it doesn't satisfy but only brings sorrow and agony. Look what they say in verses 9 and 10. We got our bread with the peril of our lives because of the sword of the wilderness. Our skin was black like an oven because of the terrible famine. You find out that the blessings of God can be taken away because of the sin in your life. Now look at look at these people. And look what they say in verse 16. The crown is fallen from our head, woe unto us that we have sinned. They took God off the throne of their heart, and he took the crown of the kingdom of heaven off of their head and gave it to the devil. And the Gentiles. The moment you put yourself or someone else over, other than God on your heart's throne, 
You'll lose the victory you once had. You'll lose crowns at the judgment seat of Christ. So confess how wrong you are, just like God's people do in chapter 5. They say in Lamentations five nineteen through 22, Thou, O Lord, remainest forever, thy throne from generation to generation. Wherefore dost thou forget us forever and forsake us so long time? Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned. Renew our days as of old. But thou hast utterly rejected us. Thou art very wroth against us. So turn back to the God. Draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. God wants to fellowship with you more than you want to with him. So remember that. Don't let the devil trick you into thinking that you're too far gone or that God doesn't want to have anything to do with you. That's a complete lie. But this has just been a short overview of a short book of the Bible that has five chapters and 154 verses. It's a great book. I hope I've whet your appetite to read it. Like I said, the, the author is Jeremiah. And in Jeremiah, he wrote before the exile. And now in Lamentations, he's writing during the exile where they've been taken captive uh, because of Nebuchadnezzar coming in there. The theme of the book is the desolation of Jerusalem, dealing with the destruction of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar. But look through there and also see the doctrinal sense of the Antichrist coming in there and how, how it, what it's going to be like for the Jews in the tribulation. But this has just been a quick overview, and I pray that you'll read this great short book for yourself.